Hello everybody, Coach Quincy here. I'm so sorry if you joined earlier today. I completely messed up my time zone. <laughs> so we are going to talk with Stephanie today. She is an electrolysis. So let's get, uh, give her a few minutes here. In fact, I'll see if I can request her in. Let's see. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I messed up the time zones completely. <laughs> oh, no. Totally okay. I was like, hmm, I don't know what, I didn't know what state you were in at the time. Yeah. So I didn't even catch it. Like, yeah, it just, <laughs> I'm just going to blame it on my pregnant baby brain. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, do it while you can. <laughs> Well, I'm usually, um, and I might have Googled, like, our time differences, and I may have compared it to, like, time in Texas, which is where I actually live, but I'm here in Maine, so I'm like, oh, did I mess up that time? So <laughs> thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> We're good. We are good. Awesome. Well, um, I glad you joined me today. I just, I love talking about all topics, you know, PCOS and everything. And I think I found your profile probably, it was either a hashtag PCOS thing, or maybe you were commented on another person that is um, of PCOS and that kind of thing. So, you know, up until probably recently, I didn't even really know what electrology was. No. So, if you could just kind of dive into that for me, because when I think about like hair removal, mm -hmm. for example, I think of just like laser hair removal. Um, yeah, which you are not a candidate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, so can you kind of elaborate on what like electrology is and like the difference? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to yeah. talk a little bit of the science behind it. So we yeah. have laser, when we're talking about like permanent results, okay, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about electrolysis is FDA approved for permanent hair removal and laser is FDA approved for permanent hair reduction. The reason we can't say removal with laser is that you have to have a candidacy for it to be most effective because the light is attracted to melanin, the melanin is then targeted and breaks down the hair. But if there okay. is no melanin to be attracted to, nothing will happen. And this is why red hair, blonde hair, gray hair, doesn't work with laser. And this is also why thin hair doesn't work with laser because there's not enough of a target source. Okay. Yeah. Electrolysis on the other hand is we use a very fine filament, a very tiny wire that we insert into each individual hair follicle. And then in, in inserting that hair follicle, we take heat and chemical change and break down the root structure of the hair. So the reason that we can say permanent with electrolysis is because you are inserting something into the follicle, your target is always reached, does not matter what it looks like, because you put something in the place to do the work. Okay. So when I'm talking to patients about like, how do we make these decisions, right? It all comes down to the work in front of us. So I do both laser and electrolysis. I've been doing it for 19 years. And I make those decisions every day based on the work in front of me. Mm -hmm. So just breaking yeah. it down with chemical change and heat. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And like, so how would somebody like find an electrolysis? Like, so, you know, in their area? Like, This is my favorite thing to talk about. So um, one, yeah, electrologist is what we are. Electrolysis mm -hmm. is what we do. And electrology is what we study. So uh -huh. how to find an electrologist is you can go on to websites like electrology.com, which is uh, a database of certified professional electrologists all over the globe. Or Society of Clinical and Medical Hair Removal also has a great directory. And these are organizations that help with continuing education and make sure that their, their electrologists are up to date on the current standards of practice. And they have membership boards that you can find. The other way is Dr. Google, right? Go on yeah. to Google, <laughs> right? And we type in electroly electrologist near me or electrolysis near me. That way you can find someone that is a practitioner or a clinic near you. Gotcha. But how to find somebody certified is the harder part. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. So, 
how many treatments would someone need? So I think the biggest thing with PCOS is heritism for a lot of women. So they have, you know, that male pattern, hair growth, especially around the jawline or around the lips. Um, so like what would make somebody a candidate? Like you said, like for me, I'm lighter skin kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, like would other laser, like laser therapy, mm -hmm. would they, you know, a candidate, like what makes them a candidate for? So laser, like I said before, it goes after melanin. So the darker the okay. hair, okay, the more you can do laser, but also the larger the target. So if we're talking okay. about hair hirsutism, which is the stuff that we're going to see in our PCOS pattern mm -hmm. growth, if it's beard growth, then what you're going to experience is you could get some laser therapies as long as you're a candidate. Now, that's going to come from a consultation, okay? Mm -hmm. And not all technicians are well-versed and cross-trained. So it's going to be something that we really have to focus on here. That cross-training is incredibly important. If you don't know when to use the right tool, it becomes harder to find a clinician near you that can take care of the job. So yeah. when you're going in and like as an in, informed consumer, what you want to make sure that you're doing is you want to make sure that your technician, one, uh, adheres to like higher effective uh, infection prevention standards. You want to make sure that they, they're keeping their, their clinic clean, okay? They're staying on top of their continued education and they understand the technology that they're working with, okay? Those are the three things that you as a consumer need to focus on. On the back end, the technician then assesses your needs. Okay, so for example, if you came to me, and we're gonna use you as an example because you're really mm -hmm. prime candidate for electrolysis. If you came mm -hmm. to me and you said, hey Steph, I have male pattern uh, beard growth through my face, okay? And I have blonde hair and I have been shaving, plucking, waxing every day of my life for, let's say since uh, going into puberty, okay? What you need to then focus on is the frequency of the the technician focuses on is the frequency at which you've been doing that previously so that we can tell you how many sessions you'll need to get it cleared the first time and then the frequency of those sessions once we've cleared it the first time okay. your first sessions are going to be the hardest because depending on the level of hirsutism will depend on how long it takes to clear a face okay so let's say if you came to me and you're like, Stephanie, I have a full beard. I'm waxing at, like once a month, my entire face, and it's severe. It's like from cheek to lower neck, okay? All of this. Then I'm gonna tell you that clearance will take probably up to four months to get you through the first clearing because we can't aggressively treat your skin because one of the balancing acts of electrology is giving you just enough current to destroy a hair while still preserving your skin's tissue. That's so a lot of people are like, I mean, hirsutism, we both know, it can be crippling for a lot of people. Uh -huh. And so one of the big things that you face is we need to balance that out and make sure that you feel like we're getting rid of the hair, but you're still gonna have beautiful skin after we do. Because some people will say, oh, crank it up to 11 mm -hmm. and let's just kill it all. But the uh -huh. problem is, is you could compromise your tissue and then what was the point? Okay, so uh, we can throw a lot of clearance time at you, but if we compromise your tissue, what was the point? Okay, because then we're uh, battling something else. So most people, let's just talk about like that timeline. You're just, your very first question was how many treatments? There is no number yeah. of treatments because that treatment timeline is dependent on how much you come to me with. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. when I first started getting electrolysis for myself, I started on my upper lip, okay? I started at 12 years old, and that was before really seeing the effect of what hormones were doing to me, okay? So <laughs> I started here. A clearance was probably 30 minutes uh, to get through my whole upper lip. I used to go to the dentist before the treatment. My mother would take me to the dentist. My mother's also an electrologist. <laughs> she would take me to the dentist. We would numb my mouth, and then we would clear my lip, and it only took 30 minutes. And I got that done in about uh -huh. a year. But that was before hormones really hit the wall, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I turned 16 and this stuff started really amping up, that was like two hours worth of treatment. And I did not have the pain threshold to deal with that at 16 years old. So uh -huh. to clear it, I couldn't do that because it was too much pain for me. 
Okay. Gotcha. So we, okay. Would, we would do it in small patterns, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, all the way through my gotcha. face to get it better. And that's when that number yeah. of thing gets bad. Cause that's like, that can really rack up. Gotcha. What? Did you hear that on your end? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, yes, we did. <laughs> I'm like, decline, like, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> so, um, so you mentioned like the pain tolerance and everything. Is there a, like a numbing cream you can use and stuff like that yeah. for those kind of treatments? There's numbing creams. You can pair up with a doctor and have a doctor numb the area or a nurse, depending on your state's, um, uh, oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, practices there we go okay, yeah so depending on yeah. your practice, it will depend on what what you can do um i when i first started i used to get like i said the dentist to block it and then later in life yeah. we brought on a nursing staff with a medical director who could administer lidocaine injections so our practice offers lidocaine oh, injections administered gotcha. by a medical staff, okay and gotcha. then for some people, yeah. numbing cream was enough. Numbing cream was enough for my cheeks, yeah. for my neck. I had no pain threshold and it was too much. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So that varies person to person and then also state to state, whether or not you can do that or not. Yeah. But we have I'm also, um, the states for us. That would say that again. We have people that fly across the United States for our practice because we have the light. Oh, wow. So like we have women with PCOS fly in frequently and they'll do a full clearance and then their home electrologist will manage what we've cleared with smaller sessions. So it's less painful. That is so cool. That is so cool. That's such a neat, like, and also just to know like the community and then that's available to you. Like if you have the means to go and do that and travel. So that's yeah. really cool. Very cool. So like, is there any, I guess, like risk involved in doing, you mentioned the skin thing. So like, you don't want to, you can damage the skin if you do too much or it's, if it's at a higher level. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any other risks like skin pigmentation stuff and there that is. kind of thing too? Okay. There is. Um, so one of the things I'm going to, after this post, and you're more than ha welcome to like reshare when you see this kind of stuff, there are before and after protocols that you do need to follow. There are contraindications with practice as well, okay? One of the most common ones is women who are pregnant. Um, they can only have thermolysis done, and we do re we request that you have a doctor's note, only because, especially in the PCOS community, we work so hard to get pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't want to put that risk on the electrologist, right, that something right. might go wrong. The thing is, is, like, there isn't anything that could go wrong with thermolysis, but it, since it's not scientifically studied, we say no, okay? And that's yeah. because who's going to study on someone who has struggled to get pregnant if electrolysis right. is safer? So that's really up to you and your comfort level. But because there is no wavelength through the body with thermolysis, you can do it during pregnancy as long as your doctor approves it. Electrolysis yeah. itself. So you have electrolysis, thermolysis, and blend. These are modalities of electrolysis. Electrolysis and blend use galvanized current to go through the body and activate the, the sodium hydroxide within the follicle and change that to lye. So it's a chemical change. So we don't want to pass something through the body that would interfere with the fetus as well. So that's why we do thermolysis. Thermolysis only is heat directly at the tip of the probe and that there's no activation through the body. And then okay. the blend is a combination of the two, but it still uses galvanized current. So you don't want to do that. And gotcha. then um, contraindications, uh, people with melanin-rich skin, okay? Anytime we mm -hmm. get injured, we send more melanin to the area. You can end up with hyperactivation of that melanin called hyperpigmentation. And then you could, yeah. if you hyperpigmentate and you pick at it, you could remove some pigment. And that is called hypopigmentation, which means that we remove the pigment. Hyperpigmentation will reduce. Hypopigmentation, you can't put it back. So once you take out the pigment, it's out. But if it's gotten darker, it'll mm -hmm. lighten back up. Gotcha. And then, um, so hyperpigmentation, redness and swelling, those are common. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of a mm -hmm. histamine reaction just because I'm irritating the heck out of your skin to kill that hair, okay? But they're all things that will resolve after treatment. It just takes time. 
I do not like to work on patients who are on Accutane uh, because it is very rough on the skin. So I, I forego that until you're off of Accutane. Uh, that depends on the technician of how long you should be off of it. I, I tell my patients three months. But if you're mm -hmm. on any photosensitives, hyperpigmentation is higher. Gotcha. Is that like the main medication that you would rec or like not treat with? Or are there yeah. other medications out there too that are kind of yeah. fine? That's so the that's main the main one. one. Yeah, that's the main yeah. one. Everything else is pretty cool. I mean, if you're on a retinol, if you're on a, a photosensitive medication like antibiotics, uh, you're going to have hyperpigmentation during that time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, will it go away? Yeah, it just takes time. If you're in a sunnier state and you're not wearing SPF during your electrolysis sessions, you're gonna have hyperpigmentation. Does it go away? Yes, it just takes time. Um, I'll tell you a yeah. funny story. Back when I was in high school, I had hyperpigmentation all across my forehead and it was the week of picture week. <laughs> and oh, no. it was one of those things, like I didn't follow protocol. And as you guys can see, this is filter free, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Within reason, um, but it is, it goes away. It just takes months, if not up to a couple of years to, for it to go away. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so is there anything like you would recommend? Cause I think I saw this in another one of your videos about like not doing. So basically like if you have like one or two hair growths, like don't tweeze it or tweeze it or no, <laughs> don't tweeze it. <laughs> okay, you'll see every electrologist and laser technician do one of these numbers when you say tweeze, because it's like, ooh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so tweezing, <laughs> tweezing, waxing, threading stimulates blood flow and stem cells. If you're okay with giving yourself a longer treatment plan, then I can't tell you what to do, right? But as your professional and guiding you through your investment, the more you tweeze, wax, and thread, the longer the process takes because it takes time to break down that follicle that's always constantly being stimulated by the injury. So we want to mm -hmm. discontinue that. You can shave, you can trim, you can nair, you can bleach. I'm not a big fan of nair because nair does yeah. really cause a lot of like chemical burns on people. They don't do spot testing and that kind of stuff. But right. it can be done. You just have to be really careful with it. Like you got to spot test that yeah. stuff, especially when it goes on your face. Yes. Yes. I actually did that um, recently because I think I, because I do, I'll have like one or two hairs really for me. And I will, I will usually just pluck them. <laughs> and then I saw your, you know, video beforehand. And you're like, don't do that. So <laughs> then I had some, some bleach. I was like, well, let me just try this one. And I did okay. So I did, did a couple okay. spots. So <laughs> okay. I did a couple One of those spots. funny ones where you're like, Ugh. yeah, but yeah. You know, your eyebrows, your eyebrows are going to change shape. We all remember what our early 2000s looked like and how thin the brows got. <laughs> Clearly, they yeah. came back a little bit, right? Um, some yes. of makeup. Um, but if you're tweezing hormonal hair growth, which is going to be anything along this line you have a higher propensity of increasing your growth. And if your PCOS yeah. is unmanaged, it becomes higher. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. One other big things, um, I know in the PCOS community, we talk a lot about reducing our testosterone levels through stuff like mm -hmm. spearmint teas and that kind of stuff. Yes, they will help possible future growth, but if it's been stimulated, it's hard, you, you'll be hard pressed to get that to reduce using spearmint teas. It will be great for managing in the future. Like if, say for example, you know that your, your body could possibly sprout up some hair, that spearmint tea will help reduce that. But the amount that you would have to drink for severe levels of hirsutism, it's pretty high and yeah. nobody's gonna it get is. tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. What about like um, spiralactin? I know a lot of girl, like women get on that for kind of lowering those androgen levels. Does that help with the hair it growth does help and everything? With the hair, but it's going to help. Okay. So you also have three types of hair because we have talked about three mm -hmm. modalities and then we have three types of hair. We have vellus, accelerated vellus, and terminal. 
Accelerated vellus and vellus can be managed through spironolactone, finasteride, um, Vaniqua, uh, some birth controls. I'm not a huge fan of those, but they, it can be managed through that. Um, but the fact is, is if it goes from accelerated vellus to terminal, and that means basically, so if we think about the density of a hair, a terminal hair would be what's on your underarms. Accelerated vellus okay. tends to be what's here on your forearm, okay? And mm -hmm. then vellus tends to be what's on the cheeks when it's not a hirsute case. Um, okay. That being said, you can't really reduce the volume of the accelerated vellus of your hair of your arms, except through something like spironolactone. And if you have been doing anything to stimulate growth, it's hard to change it. Yeah. 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 That's gotcha. it. And but like with somebody it's worth it. Yeah. 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 It is. If it's like, you know, out of hand and, and you need that for lowering those androgen levels. Um, so like with somebody come for electrologist just for the facial aspect or are there other areas where you would also do work on? Like you said, mention arms and the whole thing. <laughs> that whole thing. The whole thing. Everywhere on your body, the only places that we don't go is inside the nose and inside the ears. Because we need to wow. be able to see the entry point of our hair follicle. If you think, if I can't see like the entry point, then I can't get to it. So that's why those are not great. The other thing is, is inside the nose, that's part of your danger triangle. Your danger triangle is basically this zone. It's a higher propensity for bacteria problems and go straight to your brain. That's why we don't right. do that as well. Okay. But gotcha. you name it, I've zapped it. Okay. Um, awesome. Same yeah. thing happens with laser, but with laser, you know, you don't want to go anywhere near the eye with laser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in many cases, I call laser like, that's my large volume, right? That's my workhorse. It's going to get in there and it's going to be your full legs, your underarms, your bikini Brazilian. It's going to be like the, the big stuff. Sometimes your form, yeah. not your upper arms, not your back, not your stomach and chest. Because in most cases, it's just not dense enough. Gotcha. Yeah. Because I've had in my past, this is probably like over a decade, I had uh, laser hair removal for like underarms and bikini line. And, and it probably because of my like hair is lighter and everything. It definitely didn't, it lasted for a while, mm -hmm. but it's definitely come back since then. So mm -hmm. it, it's, yeah. So I think, and I had quite a few treatments with laser um, at the time. So and I think like it came back is just because you weren't truly a candidate. I mean, yeah. When I assess somebody for laser hair removal, if, for example, your hair is the color of the hairs on your eyebrow, uh, you're not a laser candidate, okay? Yeah. Now, will it help reduce the volume? Will it make your life easier? Will it make it easier to shave? Heck yes, all day, let's do it, right? Yeah. But you're going to be the person that goes for laser and you maintain a reduced volume of growth. It's only mm -hmm. to go to electrolysis for the remaining portion of it, if you want it permanently gotcha. not. Right. Gotcha. And that would be like the permanent solution is really uh, electrology. Yep. Electrology. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> electrology. Trying to get the terms down right. <laughs> that's all right. I, you know what? I love this because at the end of the day, I, that's the number one thing. People are like, what do I call you? And I'm like, my name's Stephanie. You know, yeah. but like, <laughs> it's electrologist. That's what I do. Yes. <laughs> I do electrolysis, you know, so. Yes. Lasers, but, easy. you just say laser and everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it is more in depth than just laser. And okay. there is a difference, right? Because there's also, you can just get your laser certification and you can also increase your education and do electrology, right? Like there's, there's a big difference. Yeah. So laser training in most cases, now it changes state to state. I'll tell you. Um, the laser and electrolysis certification across, let's just call the US, okay? Across the US is all over the place. But mm -hmm. um, most electrology programs are between 320 and 1600 hours, depending on your state, okay? Mm -hmm. Some states like, um, I'll give you like Arizona and Washington, uh, Denver, or not Denver, Colorado, uh, Texas, 
They're unlicensed states and they don't have a hour requirement. Unfortunately, somebody can go buy a machine off eBay and call themselves an electrologist and have zero training. Okay. We don't want to do that because <laughs> we yeah. are inserting a heat based filament into a follicle. Don't do that to yourself. But yes. um, at, at minimum for you to get national certification, you have to have had 320 hours underneath someone who is also certified, which is how my program works. And then, uh, you can sit with them for a year and get your certification after a year, or you can go and be on your own and then get certified after five years of being on your own. So there's like high levels of hour requirements. Gotcha. With laser, it's like 24 to 40 hours. In Arizona, you could like be Joe Schmo off the street, go for laser training and go be a laser technician tomorrow. Yeah. But like in other states, you might have to be a nurse or a doctor in other states you have to be laser trained and so it's so very like you have to be certified so yay yeah. you can fire a laser safely but that hour requirement is pretty low yeah 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 and i've seen you wear like the loops the magnifying glasses so do you actually you can actually see like the follicles in there and you can kind of zap them oh, as you yeah. go along yeah so is it my does it take a while like, oh, yeah. is it like instant? So with electrolysis, you're, you're working between a half a second to like four to eight seconds per follicle, depending on your modality. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the loops just help you see the entry point to your hair because obviously proper insertions means you hit your target properly and then you d damage the target properly. Uh, gotcha. So that's kind of a cool part. Um, I have been a loops user. Like I said, I've been doing like 19 years. So I've been using loops for probably about, let's say 15 of the 19 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't start off with that. And I trained my girls to use a magnifying lamp to start with. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I do that is because loops are an investment. So yes, they are. give yeah. people a heads up, like when you become an electrologist, your electrologist is investing in their success. Okay. That's from the table that they use, the loops on their face, magnification that they use. Um, that's the machinery that they're using. That is the sterilization procedures that they're using. All of that is an investment. And so when yeah. people think, oh, it's just so easy, anybody can do it. The average person walking out the door, and this is with training, like official training, plus a startup of their business, it's an investment of probably about $25,000 as just a starting point that's to get you like yeah. everything you need plus your training you're probably looking at about that okay wow and that's not like your advertising that's not any of that kind of stuff that's why we all kind of work online you know and talk about this because that's an affordable means um right. lasers effective lasers run you between 50 to 150,000 for an effective laser so wow. when you have somebody that is doing this as a profession, they're doing this to make sure that they're giving you the best possible treatment. The loops themselves are like I know. a tiny $2,500 investment. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and that's why we're so protective of them because we're like, oh, everything's yes. going to do this. But we love it. That's why we do it. But I definitely want people to know that the reason the price tag for electrolysis is what it is, is because everything we're doing is setting you up for a medical environment. Right. So. Right. And then um, just touching on the price point and everything, is it typically sold in like a package? Like if you were to go, they would sell like a package or is it kind of like per treatment? Per treatment. Definitely. Per treatment. I, and anybody that's watching this, I know that we only have a few eyeballs now, but when it's online later, you guys come back and look, remember this. Um, package pricing is okay. Okay. But the thing is, is we can't estimate your number of treatments. So if you're purchasing a package, yeah. of, let's say 50 sessions, or 10 sessions, and you need 15 minutes, one session and an hour the next, that package doesn't break down right. But what you mm -hmm. can do if you're like, say for example, tax season hits, and you want to put $2,500 towards your electrolysis and whittle away, that might be up to the electrologist and you to do that that way. Um, but most electrologists have had poor experiences with this kind of stuff in the past. And, we don't tend to do that. It's just treatment to treatment. You yep. afford what you can do and we will grow your treatment plan to make it work for you. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And then hopefully. We yeah. We hopefully want it, it works. To, yeah. Oh yeah. It will work. 
Um, yeah. Look, we want we want people to feel confident about their plan. Um, you got this. But I definitely, I definitely don't like doing packages for electrolysis. I'm barely a fan of packages for laser. If you do yeah. more than three sessions for laser in packages, it's difficult because usually you average between six and eight sessions for completion. So what, what would a package be worth? Right? Right. So pay, pay by the treatment. It, pay by treatment. Yeah. Got it. And I'm not a fan. I'm saying this out loud. I am not a fan of hair removal memberships. Everybody yeah. watching, no hair removal memberships. And the reason that is, it goes back to that at the end. If they're putting you on a membership to pay a certain amount each month, they're now in charge of that financial sum. And what if you don't need it? Right. If you don't need it and they got your money, they're not going to give it back to you. Okay. Yeah. And they will fight you tooth and nail for that kind of stuff. So don't do packages and don't, do monthly memberships because that's their money now. And yeah. either it goes towards a service or it's a wash. Yeah. And in that case, like if they were to say like, you know, you don't need it or whatever, they might not say that if it's like a, a monthly thing, do they do more damage than good by going in and, and trying to find hair follicles or? They can. You know? I mean, yeah. I, like, it's more like they do more damage here than here in yeah. those sites because you just feel like, can I ever get out of this? Am I always going to be in debt to this, this system? It electrologists and laser technicians that really love what they do. They're going to tell you, let's just walk this one step at a time, just like yeah. personal trainers. I mean, like the fact is, is right. like, they're doing it because they're passionate about what they do. Um, and their goal is to get you to the next step and like keep you accountable to the plan that you two set forth in the beginning. Electrologists yeah. are doing just that. We are sitting there going, okay, these are our goals. These, mm -hmm. are, these are the goals that we want to attain now, six months from now, a year from now. How can I help you break that down? You know, most of my patients are with me between a year and a half to five years, depending on whether or not they have their hormones managed or not. Okay. Right. So during that time, it's like, okay, let's, if, if I see that we're going to have a big hair problem in front of us, I want to make sure that they understand that like, my goal is to work with what's bothering you first and stair step you into permanency in new areas. We don't have to eat the whole elephant at once. That's like my right. favorite one bite at a time. <laughs> Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow, this has been super informative. I feel like I learned so much. So I really appreciate you jumping on here with me today. Do you have any like last final words or the final advice for anybody like looking for that kind of treatment or looking for hair removal treatment? We're talking to the PCOS community. My friends mm -hmm. that are PCOS uh, diagnosed. First things first, I want you to get with your endocrinologist, okay? Because electrologists can only work as well as your hormones are balanced, okay? So working with an endocrinologist, um, and we all know here in the States that that's a specialist, which means that you got to get to your PCP or your gyno first to get your referral. Right. But, or your NP, that's what I work with. But like, work there first, get your referral and get into an endocrinologist. Keep track yeah. of what your body is doing. Okay. Manage your symptoms as much as you can, whether that's lifestyle choices, okay, medicinal choices, or a combination of the two, that management will help the success of your electrologist. Okay. From there, trust the process. Every person that has gotten into electrology usually gets in there because we too suffered with hirsutism or we had someone that we really cared about that did. Oh, we were raised in the industry. Okay. That's like, you don't just kind of like, Oh, I think I'm going to be an electrologist tomorrow because like, because it is so it's such an interesting career, but yeah. we want this success for you just as much as you do. So trust that stay consistent to the treatment plan. If things fall out of place and you can't stay consistent, remember the damage is the damage of those follicles is done. And as long as we're not re-stimulating growth and keeping our hormones managed, 
that you yep. should still see success until you can resume treatment. You can pause at any point, you'll be okay. It doesn't matter whether it's a life event, a financial change, or just you don't have the time, right? You can pause and resume when you can, okay? But that doesn't mean that your success is gone. It just means that we're taking a pause and we'll <laughs> resume when you're ready, okay? And last, if you are looking for somebody for electrolysis and laser, I teach it, right? So at the end of the day, reach out to me. I'll try to help find you someone near you. But if you can't get a hold of me, because I do teach all day, right? Um, I want you guys to consider going to like the Society of Clinical and Medical Hair Removal or the American Electrology Association and find an electrologist and practitioner near you. These organizations do a phenomenal job of continuing education. They do a phenomenal job of making sure that their directories are kept up by people who are who care about what they're doing, okay? So go those places and they will take good care of you finding you somebody near you. Perfect, I love that. And I love that you, you know, mentioned like, yeah, take care of the hormone bit first, like see the endocrinologist and fight for it, which sometimes you have to, cause some people, like, you know, you primary care will, yeah. <laughs> You have to be your own advocate. So that is that is really good. And how would someone find you online? Is it just Instagram so, for you? Um, Instagram is my, uh, my, well, Instagram and TikTok are my two primaries. On Instagram, okay. I'm the underscore zap underscore master. Okay. Mm -hmm. And on TikTok, I'm Stephanie Shields CPE. Okay. And those are the two places that you'll find me on the, on the line. I do have like many other platforms like my YouTube and my Facebook and that kind of stuff, but they all kind of feed into the same deal. Um, I'm yes. gonna, I gave you my link in bio that they yes. can go click, find me, get a hold of me. That's a great way as well. Mm -hmm. And then awesome. um, my website, which I can type into the chat here. Hold on. Uh, and then I can uh, put it in the notes too. There you go. AZ Advanced awesome. with a B. Uh, electrology and that's how to how to get a hold of me for continuing education if you're an electrologist um, or a practitioner I do trainings for practitioners that aren't electrologists all the time if you want to know more about what we do you're welcome to purchase the same platforms and get yourself well versed in it uh, my I have uh, for electrologists I have a mentorship program that we meet every Saturday morning and we do like a little powwow about like you know like this is what we're facing and go from there and then um, that's pretty much, those are like my main programs, education, continue education and mentorship. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I've learned a lot. <laughs> Anytime. And if you guys have questions, oh. she knows how to find me. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much. Have a good night. You're welcome. Peace, love and hair removal. <laughs> <laughs>